All right, take two. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about something that I'm guessing you really like. It's uh, what's in my camera bag. I'm gonna go through all the different bags that I use. There's no bag that really suits everyone, so I myself use four bags in total, depending on what I'm doing. But I'll run through my bags and then I'll go through all the gear that I take. If you have any questions about gear, just leave them in the comments below. All the gear is listed in the description below and on my website. There's more there that we probably won't get through today. For those who are new around here, my name's Ichiban and I'm a photographer, filmmaker based in Sydney. I shoot a lot of photos for commercial jobs, but I also make films now. My camera bag will be a mix of photo and video gear, depending on the day. All right, so let's get straight into it. So the first bag is the Air SF City Slinger. It's a little sling, it doesn't fit much at all. This is what I take when I don't really wanna shoot, but I do wanna carry some stuff with me. I don't really like putting my wallet and my phone in my pockets, it just bulges out. So having a sling like this, is pretty handy. It's great for traveling as well. So when you're in the plane, you can keep all your important stuff just with you here. Definitely check this company out. I like the gray color, but it's quite small. Bunch of pouches at the front, it's not very big. I usually put my phone, wallet, and maybe a point and shoot. This is a Pentax Zoom film camera, but I'll put that in there. A little key holder thing. I've got a SIM ejection tool there. At the back, there's like a quick access pocket where I'll put usually my passport and pen just for quick access on the plane. But it's made pretty well. I once built a whole bunch of sauce on it at Shake Shack and I just wiped it straight off. I think it's waterproof material as well. And the zippers, if you can tell, they're water resistant. I don't think this thing is completely waterproof, but it's pretty good for most conditions. I generally use this when I'm not taking photos. If I am taking photos and I want to actually bring a camera, I'll usually bring the next bag up, which is... All right, so this is just a generic, cheap Amazon messenger bag. Pretty cheap, I think I got it for like 30 bucks, but I'll link it in the description below. But Velcro, it's really basic, two pouches. You can put lenses at the front. I wouldn't swing it around because it'd probably fall out, but a little zipper pouch for your coins, wallet, whatever, and just like a general pouch inside, two extra pouches on the side. I generally have my camera in, on a camera strap around me. I'll put the lenses in here and maybe a jacket or something. And it's enough for a day trip when you're not taking it too seriously. It's pretty good for travel. You can pack this in your bag. When you wrap it up, it's about the size of like a pants or whatever. So you can take it with you and then ditch your camera bag and uh, use this as a day trip bag when you're traveling. Highly recommended as the second bag. I'm gonna show you bag number three. This is a bit bigger. I use it for when I actually wanna bring camera gear. All right, so this is the Chrome Industries Nico camera backpack. I've used this brand for quite a while now. It's really well made. I think it started off as a skaters brand because these two straps here, you can put your skateboard out like that. I'll show you inside in a sec, but uh, tripod goes here, tighten it down with this thing. It's got another strap here, you can dangle stuff off and it's got like all these extra accessory strap thingos. There is a laptop sleeve, which is at the front. I have a MacBook Pro 15 inch and it barely fits in there. I have to put it in and then like really jam it shut, but it does fit. It's quite simple. Nice, plain and black. Quick access compartment up here at the top. This one's weather sealed, so it's actually rubber and stuff. Do you want to put any waterproof stuff up here? All right, so in here is like a quick access compartment. Can't fit much stuff in here at all, but it's fine. To access the main camera compartment, it's only through the back, which can get a bit annoying, but I quite like it. It's a bit safer that way, so pretty standard. Fits a camera, bunch of lenses, and some accessories. It can't fit that much stuff, which is fine because I don't want to bring too much stuff. It starts to hurt my back after a while. So the smaller, the better. Bunch of mesh compartments up here to put some little things in. The thing I like about it is these uh, dividers are quite sturdy, so they don't fold in on itself. You get a lot of the soft ones where they start to flop around and you actually need the bag full for it to work properly, but this works fine. And usually I don't even have this thing full. I have a camera, a lens, and everything else is empty and it's fine. It's quite comfortable. I would recommend it. So that's the Chrome Industries Nico bag. Yeah. All right, so on to my main camera bag, which I've actually packed with all my stuff in it. I'm actually using both my cameras, so there'll be two empty slots basically in my bag. I've got a BMPCC 6K with a 10 to 18 lens, a monitor, and my main camera is the Canon R5, and I've got a Ninja with it. I've got some thoughts on the R5. 
I thought it was going to be the perfect hybrid photo video camera for me, but turns out it isn't. It has quite a few big issues, mainly to do with the 4K codec that's pretty much unusable without transcoding. It's a shame because it's almost the perfect camera, at least for me anyway. The photo files are probably the best I've ever used from a Canon camera, and despite the unusable codec, the videos that come out of this thing are actually pretty nice. That being said, I'm still holding on to the BMPCC. It's a better dedicated video camera, especially if I'm going to be behind the camera operating it. It can record directly to an SSD via a USB-C cable. SSD storage is so cheap these days, and it also means that you can plug it directly into your computer and start editing right away. Both these cameras are using small rig cages if you're wondering what they are. It just makes it easier to mount things like mics, monitors and stuff. Oh, God. All right, so this is a, I'm gonna saw my head back to my back. I'm using a wide lens. So this is the Lowepro Protactic 450AW. It's quite a big one. It fits so much stuff, but the more stuff you can fit in your bag, the heavier it gets and it's not great for your bag. I'll show you the outside first. I like that it has so many different hook strap things. I bought two of these extra straps to strap stuff onto the front, but you can access your camera and inner compartments from here. Same on the other side, it's symmetrical. So same over here. Tripod strap I usually put on the side. All right, I'm gonna take it out. So got a switch pod, which I use quite a lot for vlogging but also for just putting the camera down if I want to film anything. <laughs> it's a really low height. If you can find something to put it on top of, I'd rather trust this than a Gorilla Pod because this either stays or it doesn't, whereas a Gorilla Pod, you might try it and then if it falls, I don't want to lose my camera. I'm using a Manfrotto, just for my other tripod. It's just a ball head. It's pretty good. It's got a quick release plate. If you haven't watched my Japan vlogs, go watch them. 13 episodes, I run around Japan for 30 days with Dan, Pat, and a whole bunch of other people, so check it out. Got a carabiner, just, it's good to hook stuff onto just in case. This, if you're wondering, is just a spare camera strap from Create Explore. There's two outer little compartments. There's one on the other side as well. Got some little things here. So this is a phone holder. It's pretty cool. It's uh, yellow, so I don't lose it. You can prop it up, especially when you're on the plane or anywhere else when you're eating and stuff, you can prop your phone up so you don't have to hold it. Packs away nice and slim. Here I've got a Ulanzi phone clamp. So if you can see, it has a quarter inch thread here, which you can attach to a tripod. And this thing keeps it super secure. You put your phone in here and then you can clamp it down. When you're done, it packs away pretty easily. So it's like flat. Keep a bunch of these all throughout my bag. It's a lens cloth, pretty handy to have. Everyone always asks for them. So having them on the outside makes it super easy. Got a small rig multi-tool. So it's got Allen keys, it's got a flathead screwdriver. Pretty handy to have on the outside of my bag. Especially with all these rigs and stuff, there's lots of things you need to screw on and like tie it in and that kind of stuff. So having the tool on you is pretty great. So this is the same compartment, but on the other side. I can't recommend these enough. Um, if you can't tell what they are, they're, they're gloves. These are the fingerless type ones. As a photographer, when you're shooting, especially when you shoot sunrises and stuff, it gets super cold. And if your hands don't work, it's really hard to, to work. I leave them there all the time. I like that it's got the cutout so I can still use my phone and touch screen on my camera and stuff. Got a bunch of business cards tucked away, easy to reach. Now I'll show you the top compartment. If you can see, it's like a rigid hard shell. So if you have anything in there that it's not gonna get damaged. It doesn't go all the way in. So if you can see, it, there's like a, that's where the camera compartment starts, but I'll, I'll open it from the back. Just to quickly show you, there's a little pouch keep all your small stuff in. I have a tile tracker, which is great because if I lose my bag or I can't find it, I can just buzz it and then it'll beep. Oh wait, I've also got this, a Peak Design capture clip. It's highly recommended. If you have a clip on your camera, you can clip it onto your bag, onto your shoulder, and it stops your camera from swinging around. So if you have it on an extra app and you're trying to like climb things or move quickly, often bounces against you and it's quite annoying. There was a time when I was hiking on a glacier in New Zealand. It's so slippery with crampons on that when I was walking, I was trying to protect my camera from bouncing on and off me all day long. It got super tiring. If I had this thing, it stops it from swinging around. Highly recommended. All right, on to the main compartment. Uh, so, flat pack. Got this from Amazon. It's a cable management uh, little pouch. I usually chuck this in my suitcase or whatever, but for this purpose, I'll just show you. It's a pretty cool cable management thing. Heaps of cloths in there, every single cable I need. Packs down super light. Use that as padding, pretty much. This is a lens skirt. It's used to cut reflections from when you're shooting through glass or anything glary at all. So 
Basically, the lens goes through here, tighten it up around the lens, and then if you see these suction cups, it goes onto the window. The R5 will usually go in this compartment, and if I'm doing a video job, I'll bring the BMPCC, which is that camera, that'll go here. I use a, it's a Create Explore Dispatch camera strap. I recommend these over Peak Design ones. It has the quick release straps, which works just as well, but these don't get in my way of shooting. I found that the Peak Design ones, they always get in the viewfinder and the screen's way, so this is like a perfect length. If you've ever had that issue where you pull the camera up and then your camera strap's blocking the viewfinder with the Peak Design ones, try this one. Let's go on to the drone. I use a Mavic 2 Pro, which in my opinion is the best drone out at the moment. It's in a PGY Tech hard case. I prefer this case over the leather bag that it comes with. I think I sold that one. It allows you to split up your drone from all the other stuff. The other one, everything packs together, which is nice to have in one spot, but it's hard to fit in a, a bag. This hard case, I trust it enough that it's going to protect the actual drone inside my bag. Fits right in there snug. Best drone out there. Definitely get the pro version with the one inch sensor. Flies, it's never failed me. It's really good. The photos are really good. The videos are really good. If you've seen all my content, 90% of it is shot on this thing. Highly recommended. All right, so DJI Smart Controller. Screen is really nice. It has, I think, slightly longer range than the actual remote that it comes with. The main thing is all you have to do is just turn it on, you're ready to go. Compared to the other one, we have to plug a whole bunch of things and screw it. If you can see the Thumbsticks are hidden at the back. If you were to travel a lot, I would probably just recommend sticking with an actual normal controller because it packs down a little easier. So let's move on to lenses. On my R5 at the moment, I've currently got a Sigma 24 to 70 2.8. I chose this because it has image stabilization, which none of the EF lenses did, but now the RF ones do. It's super heavy and big, so I'm thinking about changing maybe. It does everything. It's my desert island lens. It 24 to 70 is all the range basically that I need to do a lot of jobs. Next favorite lens, the Canon EF85 1.4 IS L lens. But this is great for street detail shots. Video it's great for because it has IS, especially at that longer focal range. I shoot a lot of street with it. Here's some photos of a street that I've shot on this lens. All right, next lens, I've got a 16 to 35 F4. It's a older EF lens. I like it because it's a lot smaller, it's quite sharp and it has IS. So this is the lens that I use for vlogging quite a bit. 16 is a perfect size with the switch pod. If you hold it out, it's a perfect vlogging lens. It's great until it gets dark. Once it's dark, it's a lot harder to shoot because it's F4. So that's probably one of the only reasons why I want to upgrade this lens. I usually shove a whole bunch of batteries in there. I've got two Mavic batteries and a bunch of LPE6 batteries for my Canon. The dividers on this bag are pretty cool. There's like a little pouch thing where you can keep SD cards. I've got like a, got a little Allen key. I've got my film camera. So I've got a EOS 500. This I bought for $30 on Facebook or whatever. It's a pretty good camera. All the film photos I shot in Japan was on this little thing. The good thing about this is that it fits and works with all my EF lenses. Auto focus works, it has aperture priority, has shutter priority. Works like a normal camera, it's just a bit slow. The only issues with this camera is that it only goes up to one two thousandth of a shutter speed, which shooting at 1.4 during the day just doesn't work. So there are faster ones out there, which I'm trying to get my hands on. I like how small this thing is. Uh, I always have a rocket blower with me. It's always handy. For audio gear, I have a Rode Video Mic Pro. I like this version because it has the auto on feature. So when you plug it in and you start recording, it'll turn on by itself and it turns off by itself. I've also been using this thing, which I like quite a bit. It has the wind muff. It's uh, phantom powered, so there's no battery. You don't need to turn it on or off. You just plug it straight in. It's definitely better than the onboard mic. It's a lot smaller compared to the video mic pro. So if you can see here, this thing looks pretty stupid when you're vlogging with it or walking around in public. It looks massive, right? Whereas this thing looks kind of cute and small, so it's a little easier to walk around in public with this thing. I usually have an ND filter with me. So with NDs, you buy the biggest size thread that you need. My biggest lens is an 82 millimeter thread, so I have one 82 millimeter. I keep a bunch of step up, step down rings. So my ND filter fits on all my other lenses and I only have to buy one variable ND filter. Just while we're here, I've got a lens pan and some lens wipes. All right, other pieces here. Got a little pouch with a 10,000 milliamp uh, anchor battery. All right, so 
I've used this quite a bit. It's an Osmo Action, basically the GoPro of DJI. I've got a cage in it, so I have extra attachments, a uh, hot shoe and like I've got a little mic thing. I use this quite often for POV, if you can see here, and also mounting it to the car. There's lots of inner shots and like time lapses. This thing's just handy to have just as like a little B cam so you can plop it down. So I've got a PGY Tech stick thing, selfie stick, right? It cuts. These things also kick out so you can put it down and stand it as a, a little tripod. And you have that extra reach, like a selfie stick. I'd highly recommend it. I think these are on mega sales at the moment. Get one of these, they're super cheap at the moment. And a SD case. It's just nice to have a little case where all your memory is kept. This bag does have a laptop compartment, which is quite big. It'll fit your bigger laptops in here as well. I have a MacBook Pro, like I mentioned earlier, um, 15 inch, fits perfect. One last thing, this bag it has some level of water resistance, like water will drip off it, but it also has a built in, what do you call it? A shower cap thing. So it's pretty handy. And yeah, that's my camera bag. If you have any questions about gear specifically, drop them in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you. If you want to see all my gear, there's a complete list on my website. Just go itchbound.com uh, slash gear. So a lot of stuff I didn't mention today because I didn't want to bore you with all the little pieces, but generally that's all my gear.